So uh, here's a feeder right uh, right here, division board feeder that the bees last summer uh, built comb in. So um, that's not a bad thing. I'm not going to go in there and cut that comb out of that because it works well for a uh, ladder for the bees to crawl out on. So if I filled that up with with uh, syrup, then the bees wouldn't drown. So, but since the bees are over here, and I don't want to pull a frame right out of the middle because I'm guessing the queen bee is going to be right on this frame in the middle then uh, I'm going to start over here. So I'm going to take the frame out that has the least amount of bridge comb uh, going from one frame to the other. When bees get crowded in there, they'll start to build uh, comb between the frames. They'll, they'll start to close up the bee space. So I can do the least amount of, of uh, work and by taking one of the frames out over here first. This is how you're going to use your hive tool. You want uh, you want to use it for some leverage, you pry on it here. You can pick it up by the ears, but generally I, I end up breaking things. If I do that, it's a little easier, I think, to pick it up this way. These have stuck everything down in there, so you kind of have to work at it until you get uh, get enough wiggle room to take the frame out. So, okay, so that frame there has some crystallized honey in it, and it has pollen in it, if you want to look at that. so. The, the solid in those cells right there is actually honey that's crystallized. Um, the color is not far off from some pollens they might bring in. So, um, so uh, yeah, take a look at that and you'll see the difference between pollen and, and honey. The pollen in there is probably pollen from last year. So, there's another frame right there you can see. That's honey, cap over honey, and that there is pollen. So the pollen, so we, we can harvest some pollen. People can use it. It's proteins. Um, but uh, the bees gather it to feed their lar feed their young. That's for the brood. So I'm guessing that the queen bee's nearby. She's probably on that other frame. Oh wow. So we have some honey in the corners here that the bees are using. They they put the resources. Uh, that they need to raise brood with nearby. So we've got pollen entering here. We've got honey there that's that's in the uh, cells. They haven't oh, yeah. capped it over. And so there. So there's eggs in that. I don't see any larvae yet, but there's eggs. So we know the queen's laying. Let's look on on this frame here. I'm gonna you see eggs in there? try this frame next. On this one over here, Anna. Okay. So there's a lot of larva, and you can see see that there may be three, four days old if, if you look in the bottom of the cells. Let's show you larvae. You're going to need to see larva. So let's look in, right, look in there where there's a, there's a blank spot right there. Look uh -huh. down in the bottom of the cell and you'll see a white C-shaped worm, grub. Yeah. That's the larva and those larvae there are probably two, three days old. One day old, they're kind of hard to see. They're really small, just barely bigger than an egg. Okay, now on the other side, when you turn that frame over, we're going to see capped over brood. So when we use the word brood, we're referring to the baby bees, right? So anything from egg, larva, pupa stage until they emerge as adults. Anything uh, uh, younger than emergence is uh, called brood. So look at this pattern here. So now all this is capped over brood right here. All the, the bees underneath those caps. That's uh, when do they cap them? So they cap them when the when the uh, larva goes from larva stage to pupa stage in its development. That's when they cap it over. Huh. Right. So they're being fed constantly when they're a larva, and then when they're uh, when they're ready to go to the pupa stage, then they cap it over, they don't need any more food, they spin a cocoon inside the cell, and then they finish developing in there, and then emerge as adults. So the whole process from egg till uh, emergence is uh, 21 days. Pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else on that one? I didn't see the queen on there. Did anybody see the queen on that one? Or you don't know? Okay. We'll put this back in the same order. So, uh, this one was 
next. I'll put that in the last. I want to look at one more frame here. Have you found the queen, you say? Uh, I didn't find her yet. She should have been on one of those. Yeah, I bet she's on this one. You see her? Yeah, she's right in the middle. Darker color. This queen's got a darker head. You see her right there? Yeah. See her. So now the queen's dark, and the worker bees are a little bit lighter colored. But you leave the cage? Yeah, quite often. So we, uh, what that tells us is that the queen would have mated with uh, mostly Italian drones. She's a darker colored queen, so she would be a carniolan, uh, and uh, she probably queen. mated with with some Italian drones. So that's why the. You want a point? Okay. Uh, yeah. There's the queen right there. Eggs? Yeah, so so we would expect that if the queen's on this frame, and look, she's busy. She's sticking her head in the cells and she's measuring cells, so she's laying eggs in there. So let's find you some eggs. So there's larva that's just a day old, day old around there, and then there should be eggs. So if she starts in the center, right, and then she'll lay out as she goes. So we should look for eggs on the outskirts of a frame like this. And I don't see any uh, eggs immediately right there. But, but the yeah. colony is safe at this point. I mean, even if the queen dies, they, there's time for them to change one of the other ones? Yeah. Or... So that's a good question. So it depends on the time of the year. So what, what could happen this time of year? If something happened to the queen now, we're mid-February, um, there's no drones in here. At least I haven't seen any in this hive. This hive next to it's stronger. This colony probably starting to raise some drones. But the drones take longer to develop. And so we have to have mature drones before they can raise a new queen. Because they could raise a new queen any time of the year, but would that queen be able to mate with drones as she goes out on her mating flight? So that, uh, if it's too late in the fall, the drones uh, may have already been kicked out of the hive. If it's too early in the spring, they may not be old enough, uh, enough drones around yet. So, so how if many queens the, do they produce a year? Well, uh, so that one queen, a queen can live for several years, right? And so, but if they're going to swarm, if they're just going to reproduce, they'll make a bunch of queen cells. There may be a dozen queen cells in a, in a colony that's going to swarm. Mm -hmm. And then the old queen will take off, and then the new queen that hatches out uh, that, uh, is going to be the, the next queen in that colony. Or they might send out some after swarms. So there could be several of the new, uh, younger queens that go out in swarms also. So that's... Uh, that's just a quick, short version of the. Uh, Does it have to be a certain number of bees in the colony to swarm? Yeah, right. So they, so, so this colony here wouldn't have enough for a swarm. They would need, uh, they need to build up some strength for before. So the bees prefer to have uh, one entrance, and they'll reduce that entrance uh, certain times of the year. Uh, I might look at this colony right here and see. Well, there's no bees coming or going uh, from the entrance. There's the auger hole beneath the hand hold on the boxes. And then there's the bottom board entrance that's wide open and there's no bees using it. My bees are dead, oh no. Well, they're all coming in the back because the box is warped and they're using the back door. So once they start using a particular entrance, they'll stick with that. And so if I were to plug up the back, uh, it'd confuse the bee bees for a while, but then they would start using another access to the hive. So, did that make sense? Thrusting strength. Now that had some old, uh, that's some, some bees or some cone that was old uh, from last year. Um, and for, uh, <coughs> I, I probably scraped it off or something, uh, so they haven't built back out. That's why that looks uneven, that's uh, something I do. Let's look in here. Let's see how winter treated them. Yeah, now these bees are doing good. Is so this, this the is the first time you've opened them? Uh, no, I, I was in here earlier, so. You can see some uh, pollen there. You can see capped over honey here. There's the difference. So a moment ago we were looking at brood, and now we're looking at capped over honey. How do you know the difference? Right, so the different colors. So you can see this, this capped over here is a lighter color. You can see uh, a little bit of an air pocket underneath there. Look, if I were to smash that cell down right there, uh, then it would look, well, it's probably crystallized. Yeah, see, so now it looks more like a watery. It looks watery. So when you look at uh, capped over honey, you'll see that little air space underneath the cap uh, and above the honey. So 
Um, so the and, cells are darker because they got a right more of a brown. Yeah. 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 They're, brown. They've they've mixed the cap the capping material, which is mostly wax, with some other other things in the hive to cover up the larva with. So it needs to be porous so it can breathe. So when they put a cap on honey, though, it's solid wax. They want it airtight and moisture tight uh, inside the, the honey cell. Do they always keep the honey zones separate from the brooding zones? Uh, yes, they, they try. Them? They try to. And they they want to keep honey in proximity to where the brood is. So they've got their resources for the for the baby bees uh, right nearby. They don't have to go too far to, to pick it up. So, but generally they keep the brood chamber in the middle of the frame, and then you'll have a ring of pollen, and then a honey, honey up above that. So, well, you'll see an example of this. Let's look at this one. You'll probably see how it works. Why do you put them back in the same order? Well, this time of year, it would be best to do that because, uh, as we were just talking there, they like to have their, their brood food near the brood chamber, right? And so if I were to rearrange the order of things, they might have farther to go uh, to, uh, to the, get those resources. And then also, I don't want to uh, change the order of the brood chamber right now. So in other words, they have to have, uh, have, to have the brood chamber at a uh, consistent temperature in the mid-90s for them to incubate the brood. And if I were to take a frame with brood on it and turn it around or put it... Uh, away from the other frames with brood, they would have a harder time keeping that temperature, maintaining the temperature consistently. So if it was summertime and it was really warm out, it wouldn't be so critical if I rearranged things a little bit. But this time of year, I don't want to do it. Okay, so this is a good uh, frame for you to look on and, and identify eggs. The foundation is black wax. And so the white egg that's on the bottom of these cells right here is very visible. So you may have to just take, yeah, handle that and, and you'll have to adjust the light over your shoulder to shine down in the bottom of the cell so you can see it. But it's uh, oh, yeah. it's white and it's tiny. got a black, yeah, very tiny. Most people when they look for eggs, they're looking for something a little bit larger than, than they are and they're looking for an egg, egg shape, a chicken egg shape. It's long, it's long and slender, it's not like a chicken egg. Put oh, on wow. the okay, so now look what happened here. On this one, we have uh, um, some cells that we broke open. So they've built from the bottom bar of this frame to the top bar of the frame below it uh, some cells with drones in. So they're oh. starting to build drones. So that's a larva stage of a drone right there, you can see. That one's about old enough to be capped over. And look at there, can you see that mite on there? There's oh, a Varroa yeah. mite oh, wow. on there. Um, There's two there. of them on there. Right? Three, three Varroa mites three. on that drone larva. The varroa, because there's a longer incubation period in the drone, so they can reproduce more in a drone cell. I'll keep holding that there for a sec. I'll get a picture. So is it normal to have some of the mites in all the time? or? Yes, yeah, so you'll never get rid of all the mites. And if there's a few mites like this on your drone, in the not uh, not a big worry. Um, but when they get uh, more populous in there, then they'll start to to use the worker cells, and that's when the trouble starts. Started a uh, hundred years ago. Oh, perfect. And we're just finding out about it. Now. Perfect. So the, can you see those? They're little red. Uh, oval-shaped uh, mites. One of the five or so reasons considered in colony collapse disorders. Yeah, this is the number one, uh, public enemy number one. Bee, beekeeper enemy number one right now is the Varroa mite. And they'll uh, poke a hole in the bee, kind of like a mosquito on us would poke a hole and, and suck the blood out of it. That's kind of what they do. To